Nicolas Cage and Johnny Depp have made a living off of playing characters that search for long-lost treasure throughout the world. But have you ever wondered how much truth there is to some of their tales? You may be surprised to find out that on more than one occasion, there have been many who were slightly careless when it came to remembering where they placed their hidden riches. Join us as we have a look at some of the lost treasures from around the world. Now, throughout the world, there are numerous treasures that have been lost to time. Many are worth millions, and some are even worth billions of dollars. You might be happy to know that these treasures were hidden by pirates, Egyptians, and the United States government, unlike what Hollywood would have you believe. Treasures like the Copper Scrolls of Qumran The northern tip of the Dead Sea is home to one of the world's most famous historical locations, the Qumran Archaeological Site. The area once served as a home to the Judean Hellenistic civilization that had been just a myth until right after the Second World War. That's because in 1946, a Jordanian archaeological team began to study the nearby caves that were believed to be the makeshift dwellings for some of the civilization's citizens. As they wandered throughout the caves, they would stumble upon 981 papyrus scrolls. The scrolls detailed the social, religious, and political events of their civilization. While these scrolls were an important find for researchers, it was still not the real treasure of Qumran's caves. Upon further investigation into the deep caverns, the archaeologists stumbled upon two more scrolls, made of copper rather than papyrus. They would reveal the location of 64 different hidden treasures that were placed by people of the city. The problem that researchers ran into was that the language that was contained within the text on the scrolls seemed to be unique to the Copper Scrolls themselves, rather than the region. The text shares many words with Hebrew, but also often contains Greek lettering as well. Some theorized that the text was actually transcribed by a foreign author who didn't have a strong grasp on the local dialect, and therefore would be forced to blend two common languages. After the text was fully deciphered, a search mission began and proved to be fairly unsuccessful. While some of the described treasures were found, many sites seem to have already been pillaged. It's simply assumed that the Romans, who occupied the area after the civilization, found many of the treasures by accident. However, there's still hope that there may be more riches hidden in the dark corners of Qumran, and it's believed that the scrolls likely revealed even more. But due to nearly 2,000 years of oxidation, the copper was fragile to the touch and much of it has been lost to time. A popular estimation of the entire fortune is an astounding $1.2 billion. Arthur Dutch Flegenheimer Schultz's rise to power came during Prohibition, where he first started out as a bar bouncer and then soon promoted himself to the position of professional bootlegger and full-time thug. Schultz became one of the premier bootleggers of the time by threatening bar owners who refused to buy his product. On one occasion, he even hung a man by his thumbs from meat hooks, wrapped his face in gauze soaked in gonorrhea discharge, and mercilessly beat him until he agreed to the deal. Now, if that isn't an effective business tactic, I don't really know what is. Schultz's MMA style of business would quickly bring him a fortune in excess of $20 million. With the fortune came widespread attention from local law enforcement and Schultz was eventually brought in for questioning regarding tax evasion along with financial dealings of a few of his businesses. It wouldn't be long before Schultz would be taken down for his crimes, but not before he was able to stash his fortune away. And it's no small secret that the mobsters who go to jail always lose their empire during incarceration. Schultz, who was wise to the trend, decided to take his vast fortune and hide it in the Catskill Mountains in the southeastern part of New York State. But the only problem is, he didn't tell anyone where it was. Once he returned to the city, Schultz was determined to avoid prison and set out to kill the prosecuting U.S. attorney. To do this, Schultz would first have to ask for permission from the Mafia Commission, who denied his request to murder his enemy. Against the will of the entire Mafia, Schultz then decided to make an attempt on the attorney's life anyways. 
However, he failed to kill him. The Mafia Commission soon put out a hit on Schultz for his betrayal, and he would be murdered by two hitmen outside of the Palace Chop House on October 23rd of 1935. And as Schultz died, so did the location of his $20 million fortune. The Lost Leonardo The Lost Leonardo was a mural made by Leonardo da Vinci in 1505. The previous year, da Vinci was commissioned to paint a mural on one of the walls in the famous Hall of 500. On the opposite side of the room, Michelangelo was commissioned to paint another mural depicting the Battle of Caschina. This would be the only project that the two legendary painters would ever collaborate on. Da Vinci began the mural, but while he was experimenting with new mediums, including oil colors painted on top of a thick layer of wax infused undercoat, Da Vinci quickly realized that the paint was not sticking to the walls and was beginning to drip. In a panic, he would begin to try to dry the paint as quickly as possible and save as much of the mural as he could, but inevitably his work of art was a loss. The only thing that survived was the lower half, despite all of his efforts. The unfinished paintings would remain on the wall for nearly a decade before being tampered with for reconstruction. That was until an art analyst named Maurizio Saracini made an astounding discovery. As he was analyzing the current mural of the Battle of Maracino, he noticed that one of the green French flags had the words Circa Trova, or He Who Seeks Finds, written upon it. That's when he went on to propose that the second artist, Giorgio Vasari, would not have willingly destroyed the works of one of the most famous painters in history. This led to the conclusion that the mural, wherever it may be, is actually completely intact, and researchers soon discovered that the current mural was painted atop a curtain wall, meaning that hidden behind it was another structure. A further scan of the wall would reveal that there was a 1 to 3 centimeter gap between the first wall and the second wall, leaving plenty of room for the old mural to still be intact. Small fragments of pigment were then lifted from the gap to be tested, and the results proved that these fragments were consistent with the same type of unique paint mixture used by da Vinci on both his Mona Lisa and his St. John the Baptist paintings. Due to the need to preserve the outer mural painted on the curtain wall, the Italian Minister of Culture would not grant permission to extract the hidden wall, which would confirm the existence of the lost Leonardo. It would seem as though da Vinci's famous half-masterpiece is destined to remain lost forever. The Thomas Beale Fortune One of the greatest ciphers in American history comes from Bedford County, Virginia in 1821. There would be a man named Thomas Beale who amassed a great fortune over his lifetime, a fortune that's estimated to be worth nearly $43 million. Now, little is known about Beale, not even what his occupation even was, to gain such a large sum of money. But as the story goes, one day Beale would enter the local inn and hand the innkeeper, Robert Morris, a wooden box, simply requesting that he not open it for a minimum of 10 years. Upon departing from the inn, Beale then told Morris to look out for a letter from him with a key to solving the ciphers within the box. That's when Beale walked out of the inn, never to be seen again. Morris, who apparently was a very obedient guy, would wait 10 years for the letter, which never ended up coming. He then waited another 13 years until he realized that the letter was never going to arrive. Finally, after 23 years, he opened the box to find three ciphers within. He would then spend practically the rest of his life attempting to decode the messages, only managing to get a single letter with the use of the Declaration of Independence. In the letter, Beale revealed that he had hidden a fortune in the Bedford County area, and the remaining two ciphers would reveal his closest kin and the location of the hidden treasure. As Morris grew older, he handed the ciphers off to one of his close friends, as he could not find any relatives of Thomas Beale. The anonymous friend would then go on to realize that he could not crack the code by himself and sold off the pamphlets to the highest bidder in 1880 for a whopping 50 cents. In today's currency, that would roughly be about $13. 
In the 130 years since the ciphers were published, not one single person has been able to decode the other two messages. The world's best cryptographers and most powerful supercomputers have run these ciphers against almost all major historical texts, including the Bible and the Magna Carta, and none of its attempts to break the code have been successful. The U.S. government had absolutely no record of a person like that ever existing. That was, until records from the St. Louis Postal Service would reveal that a Thomas Beale had sent a letter in 1822, one year after Bedford's Thomas Beale went missing. No one knows what became of that letter, but it's assumed that it was likely misdelivered and the recipient didn't bother to return it to the post office. The Secret City of Paititi During the Spanish Inquisition in South America, rumors would swirl of a vast fortune held by the local Incas. The Spanish, infinitely greedy, wanted to seize the treasure by force from the Incas. Their armies made multiple attempts at infiltrating the Inca civilizations. However, their lack of familiarity with the land always put them at a strategic disadvantage on the battlefield. Eventually, Spain's advanced weaponry gave them the advantage in the fight, and in 1572, during a short lull in the war, the Incas retreated into the Amazon with their gold in hand. That's when the Spanish would arrive at the abandoned Incan settlement, disappointed and frustrated. Years later, a man traveling through the Andes Mountains claimed that he had stumbled upon the Incans, who were actually living in a city of gold named Paititi. The story quickly made its way back to the Spanish army, but by the time they went looking for the man, he had already moved on. Every few years, when the Spanish were ready to abandon their search, a new voice would come forward, claiming to have seen the lost city or have met with the Incan peoples during their travels. Sadly, however, none of these people were ever able to retrace their steps through the massive jungle, and the city was written off as a myth by all but treasure hunters until a satellite image showed a suspiciously barren patch of land in the middle of the Amazon. From the overhead photo, it looked as though the area had once been developed, but had long since eroded away to nothing. But this so far, the area has yet to be explored due to lack of funding along with inaccessibility. But so far, this is the best evidence that such a civilization ever existed in the Amazon. This has been a short look at some of the most interesting lost treasures from around the world, but did we miss any? Let me know all about it in the comments below, and tell me about your favorites, and thanks for watching. Antikythera Mechanism This mysterious artifact almost looks like something from the future, but it's actually at least 2,000 years old. This machine of sorts was found in the remains of a sunken Greek cargo ship.